Happy Friday, Team Thompson. I am coming to you today to read you shout outs, bring you your mindful minute, and read a little bit more of The Wild Robot. Um, if you watched last night's video, I was really in a rush to get that uploaded so you guys would have a video yesterday. I have been so busy since we're trying to get the new um, type of learning up and running for Wednesday. Uh, encourage your parents to reach out to me if you're feeling like you need a device to get your online learning done. Uh, the first phase, I was teaching you guys um, things that we've already learned, so it was practice, and I gave you 10 lessons. Our next phase is gonna be new teaching, and it's only gonna be three lessons per subject a week. Um, so it should feel more manageable for you. So let's get right into our shout outs. Um, okay, so I'm gonna read shout outs for Sophie, Austin, and Gigi today. Um, if you gave me shout outs and I didn't get them on this list, just know that I'm still going through all the shout outs that are coming in. Um, and also know that you will get a list of all the shout outs that you got um, once I'm done with everyone in our class. And then you can read through what everyone, all the kind things that people said about you. So I'm going to start with Austin. Austin, we are thinking about you. We hope everything's going okay um, with your grandma and hugs to you and your family. Here are um, some shout outs from the class. Anna says, Austin will make you laugh when you are sad. Maya says, Maya O oh, says, she really misses how you make everyone in the class laugh uh, with your good sense of humor. Will Moylan says, you are super funny. Abby says, you always make the class laugh. Cam, Austin, sa or, <laughs> Austin Cam says um, that you are a really good friend to him. Andy says, Austin, you cheer people up when they are sad. Lila said, you are really kind, Austin. Neri said, Austin is someone you would describe as considerate, helpful, and nice. And then um, Will B loves that you're always happy and funny. Austin, we're sending you all the good vibes. We miss you. All right. The next one is for Gigi. So Gigi, listen up. Miss you a ton. We're sending you good vibes. Okay. Anna says, Gigi, you are very kind. Maya Ogenard says, Gigi, I really miss seeing you and all your amazing drawings. You are so creative. Will Moylan said, you are very nice. Abby says, you're always kind and a great friend. Cam says, Gigi's really funny and she makes me laugh. Andy says, Gigi, you are a dragon expert. You always tell him new facts about dragons. Lila said that you're really good at drawing. Neri said she described you as nice, helpful, and responsible. And... Will B says that you are a true dragon, dragon and he loves that you're always pretending to be a dragon. All right, and then finally, Sophie. Sophie, listen up, we're sending you good vibes and um, Will B, or no, who was that? Um, Lila says she hopes you're having fun with your kittens at home. Will B says he loves talking to you about kittens. Um, Neri says that you are someone she'd describe as athletic, nice, and loyal. Andy says, I appreciate Sophie's help with spelling. Cam says, I, um, you're always really kind and happy. You can be really funny too. Abby said, you're a great friend and I enjoyed Hufflepuff's birthday. Maya Ogenard thinks that you are a great and funny friend. She misses seeing you. Anna says, Sophie is there for, when you need, there for you when you need her and she loves talking about kittens. Will Moylan said, you're super funny. Sophie, Gigi, Austin, hugs to you. We miss you tons and we are thinking about you. Those are our shout outs for today and wait till the end of the video to see our next three people. Okay, our mindful minute today is a mantra or affirmation for yourself to remind you that you are strong and you are capable of doing hard things. So today, repeat after me. I am gentle, powerful, and free. I am gentle, powerful, and free. I am gentle, powerful, and free. That already makes me feel better, just reminding myself that. Um, and today we'll continue the wild robot. I was just laughing with Cam, who FaceTimed me, and we were laughing about last night's video. Here I am trying to read a nice bedtime story to you guys. Uh, and in last night's chapter, there was a lot of talk about poop because the animals in the forest 
had to come and leave droppings in Roz's garden so that the plants could grow. I was not expecting that. And so I'm sure that kind of got you wound up before bed instead of calming you down. All right, so we are on chapter 34, um, The Mother. And I'm filming from my phone today, so the pictures might be a little bit harder to see. Um, but we're gonna get a few chapters in today. Like most goslings, Bright Bill followed his mother everywhere. He was a slow, tottering little thing, but Roz was rarely in a hurry. And together, they loved meandering along the forest paths and around the banks of the pond. However, they spent most of their time right in their own garden. You see, the garden was no longer scraggly. Thanks to the robot's careful attention, it was now bursting with colors and scents and flavors. Clearly, Roz was designed to work with plants. Okay, there's Bright Bill and Roz. Oh, Roz, you've been busy, said Tawny as her family grazed on the wonderland of growing things. The garden is glorious. You'll be seeing quite a lot of us around here. Tawny meant what she said. Each morning around daybreak, Roz and Bright Will would hear her quiet footsteps outside the nest. And there would be Tawny and Crown Point and their fawns, Willow and Thistle, and Brooke happily nibbling on the garden. The deer weren't the only regular visitors. The beavers became quite fond of gnawing on a, on a certain hardy shrub at the edge of the garden. Dig down, the old groundhog, popped up to munch on berries. Broadfoot, who was a giant moose, came by to chew on tree shoots. And of course, bees and butterflies were there every day, happily floating through the flowers. There always seemed to be friendly animals hanging around the garden. It was amazing how differently everyone treated Roz these days. Animals who once ran from the robot in fear now stopped by the nest just to spend time with her. The neighbors smiled and waved whenever Roz and Brightville wandered past. And at the dawn truce, the other mothers were eager to share their parenting advice. So Roz is starting to get what she really wanted at the beginning, and that was to make friends. So it seems like planning the garden, using a soft tone and inviting tone to talk with people is helping her make friends. All right, here's some of the parenting advice from the animals around uh, or at the dawn truce. Make sure Bright Bill gets plenty of rest. A tired gosling is a cranky gosling. Oh, when the wind starts blowing from the north, you must immediately get Bright Bill to safety. North winds always bring bad weather. You know, you'll never be the perfect mother, so just do the best you can. All Bright Bill really needs is to know you're doing your best. No gosling ever had a more attentive mother. Roz was always there, ready to answer her son's questions, or to play with him, or to rock him to sleep, or to whisk him away from danger. With a computer brain packed full of parenting advice and the lessons she was learning on her own, the robot was actually becoming an excellent mother. Chapter 35 the first swim. Good afternoon, you too, said Loudwing as she waddled into the garden. Remember me, Bright Bill? Loudwing, Loudwing. Very good, the old goose giggled. Now, Roz, do you know what tomorrow is? Tomorrow is swimming day, the day when all the parents take their goslings out on the pond for the first time, and you simply must bring Bright Bill. Swim, swim, said the gosling, shaking his tail feathers. Bright Bill can go, said Roz, but I cannot swim. I cannot go on the pond with him. I will not be able to protect him. Who'd have thought a big thing like you would be afraid of just a little water? Loudwing laughed. Well, don't you worry about Bright Bill. He'll be safe in the flock, and he's going to have so much fun swimming with the other goslings. We begin at sunrise. Don't be late. See you in the morning. And with that, the goose plopped onto the water and glided away. Swim, swim, said the gosling. Yes, Bright Bill, said the robot staring at the pond. Swim, swim. Early the next morning, peeps and honks and splashes began echoing across the calm water. Roz and Bright Bill followed a trail through the fog and over to a beach that was crawling with fluffy goslings and proud parents. Roz took a few steps into the water and her survival instincts immediately flared up. The robot's computer brain knew that if water got inside her body, it could be serious damage. And so as the other parents began swimming across the pond, Roz stood safely in the shallows and watched. Bright Bill, 
ran up and down the beach with the other goslings, peeping and laughing and pretending to be afraid of the tiny waves. When one wave finally pulled him in, he felt his body floating on top of the water. A big smile appeared on the gosling's face. Clearly, Brightbill was designed to swim. So we've got Roz standing in the shallows and there's Brightbill swimming around. Very good, Brightbill, said Loudwing as she floated past. You're a natural. Yes, Bright Bill, you are a natural, said Roz, trying to sound like a good mother. Loudwing rounded up all the goslings and gave them a quick swimming lesson. Remember, everyone, paddle your feet evenly to swim in a straight line. Paddle with your right foot to go left and paddle with your left foot to go right. Try it out and join the rest of us when you're ready. Happy swimming day. Loudwing and the other adult geese calmly glided toward the center of the pond. A jumble of goslings tried to keep up with them. The, young, the youngsters jostled and splashed and peeped with excitement and gradually they paddled in the direction of their parents. Only Brightville lagged behind. Mama, swim! Roz pointed to the flock. I cannot swim. Go have fun with the other geese. You will be safe with them. The gosling took a deep breath, then he shook his tail feathers and paddled his feet and set out on his very first swim. He drifted too far to the left. Then he drifted too far to the right, but his feet just kept paddling until he caught up to the other goslings. Roz spent the morning watching her son swim around and around the pond, and as she watched him, she felt something like gratitude. Thanks to Brightbill, the robot now had friends and shelter and help. Thanks to Brightbill, the robot had become better at surviving. In a way, Roz needed Brightbill as much as Brightbill needed Roz which was precisely why she felt such concern when the mood on the pond suddenly changed. One moment, everything was tranquil, which means peaceful, and the next moment, the geese were in a panic. Something was violently sloshing through the group. Mm, it was Rockmouth, the giant toothy pike. The fish had been a problem in the pond for as long as anyone could remember, but he'd never attacked goslings before. All the parents immediately went to protect their young. All the parents, except Roz. The robot could only stand in the shallows and watch as her son left the other geese behind and desperately swam toward his mother. Swim to me, Bright Bill, quickly. The gosling kicked as fast as he could, but alone on the water, he made an easy target. The pond rippled as Rockmouth slashed below the surface. Mama, help! squeaked Brightbill. The robot was terribly conflicted. Part of her knew she had to help her son, but another part knew she had to stay out of deep water. Her body lurched forward and then backward again and again as she struggled to make a decision. And then Loudwing came to the rescue. Rockmouth, don't you dare harm that little darling. The old goose fluttered over and splashed down right on top of the fish. Leave him alone. She pecked and kicked and beat her wings against the fish until he surrendered to the murky depths of the pond. Loudwing escorted Brightbill back to the beach and a minute later, the gosling was in his mother's arms, safe and sound. Rockmouth isn't as dangerous as he seems, said the goose out of breath, but I think that's enough swimming for one day. Okay, I'm gonna stop us there today. And let me pull out our next three shout outs. Okay, so we only have two more days of shout outs because we're down to the last five people in here. Okay, so the first name I'm pulling out, Abby. Okay, so we need shout outs for Abby. I need shout outs for Neri. Miss these girls. And finally, I need a shout out for Maya Ogenard. So that means we've got two people left in here. I know who they are. And so they will be coming, we'll be pulling them from the bucket on Monday. But I need your shout outs for Neri, Maya Ogenard, and Abby by Monday morning. So get those into me. Also a reminder, have your parents reach out to me if they need a um, another device in your house for your online learning. See you guys soon. Have a great weekend. Fingers crossed that we can get outdoors. I'm hoping to do some gardening this weekend and get in some more dog walks. See you guys later.